what's the significance behind the horse okay. and the rubber chair? So the rubber chair, so they're both from, a, I, I chair the annual meeting of American Science Fiction Medicine. When okay. I took over, they handed me the chicken, meaning don't be chicken to make wholesale changes. And How about then, that? And then uh, the horse was because I chaired a meeting in Austin, Texas. You've only lived in places that begin with the letter B. Uh, that is Brooklyn, where you grew up and where you saw your pediatrician, the Bronx, uh, where you went to medical school, and finally in Baltimore. Uh, how has each place influenced your work today? Um, the obvious ties, they're all very urban areas. And it's, it's, it's funny, as I've moved place to place, people have often said, how did you live there? And I think what I've liked about it is, is that all the places at that time were kind of underdogs. Mm -hmm. Which changed now, it's not as much as in London, no, it's hard to believe. But a, a lot of it is, is that, that the fabric was, was very urban and somewhat gritty, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it provided me with a challenge. It was also, even for, for medical training or a medical school, um, I got to do more. There, there was, um, many of the places have been understaffed in the medical setting. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and as a student or as a resident, uh, it, it actually added to the value that you felt. Um, as people, uh, patients were appreciative uh, of the efforts that I made. Currently, your work uh, centers around substance abuse um, and HIV. How are these two conditions interrelated, and how do you go about treating them? It's not unusual to get a response for either one of them. If, if someone knows I take care of patients with substance disorder, why would you want to take care of those patients? Um, early on in the HIV epidemic, it was similar. Why do you want to take care of those patients? Um, there are patients who need support, and one of the messages that, um, that carries through that I always say to patients, especially with, H with HIV, but substance disorder also, is, is don't lose your identity to your, uh, to your illness or your disease state. It, it's a challenge for patients who feel stigmatized and to be able to have a provider who can make them feel not ashamed um, and take away some of the blame that they may otherwise feel. It's very easy to say, you know, I wish this patient would just take their medication, but then it's another instance if they don't, they're living home to home. Early on, for instance, the HIV epidemic, some medications need refrigeration, so we'd have to, I'd have to choose patient, you know, medications that need, that need refrigeration. So every time I, I see a patient, uh, I wind up asking about their home environment, um, which, what things are stressing you right now, things that might not be apparent, I certainly didn't learn in medical school, to ask a question, so what are the stresses in your life? Um, but certainly that would be one of my first questions I ask now as patients try to take care of themselves. You are an inaugural member of the Miller Carlson Academy and a frequent contributor to our Closer website. Uh, why do you think initiatives like these are important? Somehow in medicine, I think everybody has to find their passion. For me, it was primary care and doing urban medicine. Um, but if you find a passion for something, I think like we like, to, I personally like to share my passion. I think it's often is, is also something that makes us as physicians feel better. Um, when we closer, we'll identify perhaps someone else, what else someone else says as being, hey, I felt that way too. Um, we get so busy uh, trying to balance medicine and family that I, I think sometimes it's, we worry about burnout, and, and I think. Uh, contributing to closer, I, you know, I read on a regular basis, I, I think helps us identify and, and sometimes re-identify why we became physicians. Dr. Fungo, thank you so much for your time. You're uh, that was a closer look.